So as you see here, we'll discuss the Israeli popular memory of the Israeli-Arab-Palestinian conflict, finding of a public opinion survey, and uh, I will suggest at the end some model with regard to the dynamics of a popular memory. So in order to have some, you'll understand what I mean by relating to various terms, so I will uh, give a little bit of theoretical background. So first of all, with, the, with regard to the definition of collective memory, it is generally defined as representation of the past of a group assembled in narratives that are collectively adopted. So the representation of the past of the group uh, relate to descrip description of what happened to the group in the past. Assembled in narratives, narrative is a big concept uh, to discuss a lot, but put, li sim put, put it simply, it's about a story that uh, assembles in a coherent manner all these representations. And this, these narratives are adopted by the group, which can be a country or a minority group within a country. It's not necessarily a minority. It can be the Jews in Israel, the majority, or the Palestinian Israel that are the minority, are assembled as, uh, adopted as truthful. Yeah. Meaning people can have various narratives about a certain topic so you can have, for example, with regard to the 1948 Palestinian exodus from Israel, from the land of Israel, three narratives. The Zionist one, that they were left, all of the Palestinians left willingly. The Palestinian narrative, all of them were expelled. And in the middle, the post-Zionists, some were expelled, some were left willingly. So when you adopt something, it's like you take a flag and put it in your head and you say, I adopt this narrative. I know that there are other narratives. I decided this is the truthful one. Now, with regard to the relations uh, between collective memory and narrative, so a narrative is, I can take a piece of paper and write a narrative about everything. It doesn't have any connection to memory. Only when a narrative is being adopted by some significant uh, number of people in a group, it becomes part of the collective memory of this group. Now, uh, Addressing now more specifically collective memory of conflicts, not in general. <coughs> so typically, the collective memory includes narratives that are uh, biased in favor of the in-group. They are very simplified and dichotomous. So they will portray the in-group usually unrealistically very positively and the out-group, the rival, uh, unrealistically very negatively. Now, typical collective memory as I, of conflicts, as I described earlier, is regarded by some people, and typically by the leaders and government and functional during the, the climax of conflict because it assists the citizens to be patriotic and put their share, support their country in the struggle, even to the extent of giving, sacrificing their lives. However, a, such typical collective memory that is uh, biased in favor, instrumental for the in-group, also inhibits uh, the de-escalations of conflicts, the peaceful resolution, resolution and reconciliation. Thus, positive transformation of collective memory, meaning that the collective memory will not be so biased and unrealistic in favor of the in-group. Uh, of course, when there is a factual basis for this, and usually there is fa such factual basis, such positive transformation uh, contributes to peace and reconciliation. And therefore, this leads to the uh, importance of uh, re the research of collective memory and its dynamics. Now, collective memory is actually a, an umbrella category that includes various types of uh, memories, and I will address here the, some of the main ones. Uh, the first one is the memory of the state institution. These are representation of the past. Uh, adopted by the formal institutions of the group and manifested in uh, formal publication and speeches, etc. Speeches of leaders, I mean. The other four types of memories are uh, memories of the societal institution. The first one is the historical memory. This is our memory, the scholars one, or more the historians one. Uh, the the mem a representation of the past uh, adopted by the scholars uh, manifested in their studies. This is the historical memory. The second one is the, uh, the third one is the autobiographical memory, the memory of the people with the direct experience. Uh, it can be war veterans, it can be refugees, and so forth. It is manifested, for example, in memoirs or oral history. Third one is the cultural memory, a representation of the past as they are manifested in buildings, the media, the arts, and so forth. And lastly, it's the popular memory. 
So it's the representation of the past adopted by the society, the members of the society at large, and it's best manifested directly through public opinion surveys. So after this uh, theoretical background, I will relate to the study, and then I will describe the uh, findings of the study. So this study uh, addressed the Israeli Jewish popular memory, Jewish only the Jews in Israel, only popular memory, I stress, of the Israeli-Arab-Palestinian conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is part of the wider conflict uh, between Israel and the Arabs. Uh, there was no, and until now, there's no other study uh, that addresses this uh, popular memory of the conflict. It was funded by a grant that I got from the EPRA, International Peace Research Fund, uh, Association Foundation, USA, and they also uh, sponsored my arrival to this uh, conference. And it was conducted in cooperation with a scholar that uh, some of you, of course, might know, uh, Professor Daniel uh, Bartal from Israel. So with regard to the methodology, uh, we conducted the public opinion survey in 2008 through the telephone interviews among a representative sample of 500 Israeli Jews. Representative, it means of the findings that I'm telling you now, representative to the, largely to the entire uh, Jewish society in Israel. In the survey, we uh, measured the Israeli Jewish popular memory of 23 major events or topics of the conflict. Then you have the moderate Zionists, that Israel, the Jews and Israel most of the times acted morally in the battlefield. I'm just giving you an example. On the other hand, you have moderate uh, Arab Palestinian slash Palestinian or extreme Arab Palestinian. It's a mirror image. Mm -hmm. So for example, it might say with regard to the uh, activity of the Jews and Israel, it might say the extreme Arab uh, Palestinian narrative would say that the Jews and Israel always acted immorally in the battlefield and the same for it. And most of the time with regard to the moderate. And the critical or post-Zionist narrative is somewhere in between. For example, I might give an example that is the, the Jews and Israel half of more or less half of the time acted morally and, and most of the half of the other times acted immorally. So just to make a connection between the theoretical background and the Israeli context, so the Zionist narrative here would be largely a typical collective mem popular memory of conflict that is, uh, this is to say, a more uh, biased in favor of Israel, portraying it unrealistically uh, positive or the rival negative. So let's relate to the findings. So the, the findings can be divided into three parts, a descriptive, correlations, and a model that addresses causal relations. So with regard to the descriptive aspects, first of all, we constructed an index of all the three, the 23 events, the memory of the th 23 events in order to see the bigger picture. And it's more or less the average of the popular memory with regard to the 23 uh, topics or events. So here you see again the same spectrum, and the average was found to be in point uh, 24, 2.4. So we can say that it was surprising to us because we thought in 2008 uh, the, the index would have been more here, more closer to the extreme Zionist situation. And for us, uh, as scholars of peace and conflict, and who want to have peace uh, in our region, um, it was encouraging because it was getting closer to the critical one. Uh, another aspect that I can say that probably this, this finding from 2008 uh, represents a, trans a positive transformation of the Israeli Jewish popular memory of the conflict. Why probably? Because there was no similar survey, con survey conducted earlier. So we cannot say something definitive, but every scholar that I uh, talk to in the to in the, in the, in the, on this topic, I'm sure all of you might generally think so the same. If this survey would have been conducted in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, the situation would have been here around one point <coughs> something. So probably we can talk about a positive transformation of the Israeli Jewish popular memory from one point something to 2.4. And let me give you some more specific examples from the survey, the descriptive aspect. 
Here is a question about the topic. Which of the following sentences best describes your opinion with regard to the distribution of responsibility between the Jews and Arabs, including Palestinians, for the outbreak and continuation of the Israeli-Arab conflict? Please pay attention. We're talking about outbreak and continuation. So it's the entire period. So here we, have, we use the three, for various methodological reasons, only a spectrum of three narratives. The first one is the Zionists. The Arabs, including the Palestinians, are primarily responsible for the outbreak and of the conflict and its continuation. This is the Zionist one. Here, the Arabs and the Jews are more or less equally responsible. Let's call it the critical. And the Palestinians, the Jews are primarily responsible. So we were uh, in the, to, uh, surprised to see that the biggest group, 46%, uh, think that their responsibility is more or less uh, equally responsible. May I ask how many of you are surprised uh, from these findings? Okay, not so many. You don't, maybe you, know, you don't see everybody, but not so many. Actually, the small minority of the, of among you. Uh, okay, so for us, it was encouraging. I'll give you encouraging examples. It's not that the Jews think, ah, most of them think that they are responsible. We have no responsibility. Another example. To the best of your, non of your knowledge, what was the quality of the relations between the Jews and Palestinians in Eretz Israel? This is what we Jews call uh, uh, the land of Israel, and the Palestinians call it Palestine. In the centuries that preceded the beginning of the Zionist immigration to Eretz Israel it, uh, in the end of the 19th century. Here we use the five uh, spectrum narrative, uh, narratives. The first two are Zionist, very bad or somewhat bad critical medium, and the last two are uh, Palestinians, we call it somewhat good or very good. So here we see that only about 23% think that the relationship were bad. <coughs> um, to the best of our understanding, uh, this is uh, the situation, the, 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 the actual situation is more from the critical and below. So actually, this is a relatively small number, small percentage, only 23% that think that the relationship are bad. So this is very important because many people uh, among the Jews think that it's inherent, that the conflict is inherent. Many Jews will say today in Israel that the Palestinian, the, the, the relationship with the Arab, uh, it's culturally oriented, religious oriented. There's no, there's no chance that there will be good relationship, relationship but still, if in the past it wasn't like this, it's, it means that there were other reasons, probably the clash of two national uh, uh, organizations uh, that led to the uh, dire situation in recent <coughs> times. And the, the last example relates to the causes of the 1948 Palestinian uh, refugee problem, most specifically with regarding to the causes of the exodus. What were the reasons for the departure of the Palestinian refugees during the War of Independence? This is the, the way uh, we in Israel call the 1948 war. So we see, we see here again three narratives. The first one is the Zionist one. The refugees left due to fear and cause of their leaders to leave, 41%. The refugees left too due to fear, cause of leaders, and expulsions by the Jews. We have 39% and the refugees were expelled by the Jews, 8%. So indeed, we see that the biggest group is 41% that uh, say that the expulsions took place. Wow, can't believe it. So <laughs> um, but, uh, but still we see 47%, 39 plus 8, still think that uh, expulsion did take place and we thought it was a big number. So uh, to summarize the encouraging example, it was a fairly positive uh, situation of the popular memory. It was surprisingly portray, uh, portraying positively the Israeli. We think that the, this state of affairs portrays positively the Israeli Jewish society. Because usually scholars would say that the popular memory will transform after the conflict will be resolved. There's no violence. Usually maybe a few decades after the conflict will be resolved. In Israel, we, had, we have just two uh, uh, peace agreements with the Egypt and Jordan, not with the Palestinians, very violent times at various situations. So we think for this reason, it's a, a quite surprising and uh, portraying positively the Israeli Jewish society. 
There were also uh, some discouraging examples. Uh, the, the popular memory was found to be uh, quite Zionist or biased or unrealistic. So I will quickly go through another example here with regard to the reason for the failure of the negotiation between uh, Ehud Barak and Arafat in summer of 2000. So three narratives. The first one is Zionist. Barak offered Arafat a very generous peace agreement, but Arafat declined mainly because he did not want peace, 56%. Uh, the second one, both parties, are both parties are responsible for the failure since, for example, Barak's offer was insufficiently generous and Arafat was unwilling to make compromise, only 25. And the last one, the Palestinian Arafat did want peace, but Barak wasn't generous enough in meeting the demands of the Palestinians. We can see the situation here. It, this is state uh, situation of the popular memory says we don't have a partner for peace. The last unencouraging, un uh, discouraging uh, example is with regard to this topic. What portion of Israeli Arabs, excluding those in East Jerusalem, have planned or taken part in terrorist activi activities against Israel since the War of Independence until today? Five narratives. The first two, almost all Israeli Arabs, most of them, half of them, a minority, an insignificant number. Why is it discouraging? Because we have very strict, very uh, accurate information. The, real, the truth is an insignificant number, 17%. Uh, only 17% hold this uh, narrative. And the rest, 73%, hold a narrative that looks at the Israeli Palestinians as more negatively as they are. OK, so it's the, second, uh, find the second aspect of findings is with regard to correlation. So a Zionist popular memory was found to be positively correlated with people who are older, more religious, politically right-wing oriented, with low income, with authoritarian personality, without high attachment to Jewish identity, and high level of popular memory of past Jewish persecution. So people who think, yes, we Jews were persecuted throughout centuries, they will also have a, such a, a, a Zionist popular memory. And uh, these people were also uh, positively correlated with low level of openness to new alternative information about the conflict. So if, if we, for example, we were to uh, the present before them another uh, information that would portray the Israelis less positive of the uh, positive or the Palestinians more positive, they would be more closed to such information, information that could have tra positively transformed their popular memory. The second uh, set of uh, correlation, correlational uh, findings is the Zionist popular memory is also positively correlated with people who have negative emotions towards Arab Palestinians, Palestinians emotions such as hate, fear, despair, or anger, and do not have a positive emotion towards the rivals and hope for resolving the conflict. These people are also less willing to sign peace agreements with the Palestinians and Syria. So we see various correlation that explain to some degree the importance of popular memory. And here is the, the last part, and by this I will uh, conclude. Yeah. So by this I will conclude, I will not be able to explain a lot, but we constructed the model that was found to be significant. Um, and here are the independent factors, here are mediating factors, and in, here are independent factors. The independent factors are support for compromises and support for military measures mm -hmm. uh, against the Palestinians. And uh, I will have to uh, delay this. So, in conclusion, descriptively, the Israeli Jewish popular memory of the conflict was surprisingly found in 2008 to be quite critical. However, part of it is still biased among part of the population. We believe that the situation now in 2016 is very similar to what we found out in 2008. There are no reasons to think that it changed dramatically. Correlation-wise, various correlations with the popular memory were found, and also a model was suggested. Thank you very much.